John, uh, several years ago, you were here at the International Conference of Creationism, and you were the keynote speaker, and someone had quoted you as saying that it's the creationists who have the best evidence scientifically, while the evolutionists, they have the best PR. Would you consider that to be still true? You know, when I say that the evolutionists have the best PR, they've got this propaganda machine. They've got the school systems in particular. Right. And they've got access to the news media. And so, you know, everything goes through that evolution filter, and it always comes out. You've got to see the evolution side. I mean, and um, is that PR? Is just, they just have a, 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 a propaganda machine. They can communicate, whereas we have churches, we have some churches, um, you know, but we have it, some it, PR, it, right? It, yeah, it but doesn't. They have get like through. the newspapers, all yeah. the magazines, the universities. But it, yet, as a scientist, all... we do a lot of research there at, at the Institute for Creation Research. Okay. And right. man, every time we look down a microscope, or every time we go out to Grand Canyon and look at the rocks, man, we see stuff that that just supports creation, the creation view of history, better than the evolution view of history. Okay. Uh, we're not seeing evolution take place. We're not seeing creation take place. We're seeing the evidence. And the evidence supports creation and flood a whole lot better than it supports evolution and, and the billions of years idea. Okay. But how do, you, how do you get that through to people? Um, there's a resistance to it, and it shouldn't be, but that is the fact. All right. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about specifically. What do you, as a geologist, you have a PhD in, in geology? My doctorate's in geological engineering. Okay. Uh, so I've kind of turned into a geologist, but I'm really trained as an engineer. So what do you find to be maybe some, uh, a specific piece of evidence that supports creation? You know, from a geology perspective, uh, involved in the creation evolution controversy, I've got to be involved in Noah's flood. I mean, that's the, that's the key. Right. In fact, I really think that the flood of Noah's day is the key to understanding creation evolution. And I'll tell you why. If, 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 uh, if, if you ask an evolutionist, where's the evidence for evolution? Where's the evidence for the millions of years? They say, oh, it's in the rocks and the fossils. Well, but the more I study the rocks and the more creationists do research, you know, the rocks really point to a massive water catastrophe that laid these sediments down quickly. And now the sediments have hardened into sedimentary rock or these, these great mega volcanoes and, and super faults and stuff that, are, that can only happen, they don't happen today uh, if, if it's, you know, it's, it's something that was different going on in the past, and that was a major world convulsing catastrophe. That the Bible speaks about that and says that the world that then was being overflowed with water perished in Second Peter chapter three, okay. and we're looking at the destroyed remnant of that original created world, and then the fossils. Boy, the fossils! Um, to be a good fossils guy, you got to be a biologist. I'm a geologist, so I, but I learned a lot by studying fossils, and I've written on the fossils now a good bit, and, and the fossils, the one thing the fossils show better, it's not that they don't show evolution, and they certainly don't show evolution. If evolution is true, then you'll see a fish over the generations gradually growing legs to become an amphibian right. that can walk out on land. Mm -hmm. You don't see that in the fossils. And well, that's between every major type of animal. You don't see that. You see fish, and you see amphibians, you see different kinds of fish and different kinds of amphibians but they don't change. I mean, they're the same. They either remain the same from when the fossil was laid down to the present, or else they go extinct, and those are two choices. What you see in the fossil record, the main, main feature of the fossil record is what um, was termed stasis in science. That's a Greek term that means stay the same. It's stationary, it's static, it stays what it is. That fish stays a fish, and every time a fish has babies, it's a fish. And when that fish grows up and has babies, it's a fish. And when that fish grows up and has it's a fish. It stays a fish. It's stasis. And that's what we see in the fossil record. But every kind of animal, mm -hmm. every, just everything stays the same. Stasis. That is the big observation of the fossil record. And that's exactly what we'd expect it to be if creation is, a, is mm -hmm. the fact of history. Okay. Now, there is some change. There's some mutation. There's a lot of adaptation. But this fish may adapt and change a little bit, but it's still that kind of fish, and it's still interfertile with that kind of fish, and it stays the same. It's stasis. Right. That's what we see. We don't see evolutionary change. What we see is the opposite 
of evolutionary change. Okay, one of the things you had mentioned is extinctions. And that, you know, there's a lot of extinctions. And in fact, the evolutionists would say, I've heard them say that uh, there are like 99% like, uh, of the animals that ever existed are extinct. I'm not sure if my quote is exact on that, but anyway, they would they say that there's a lot of extinctions. And, and then they would go on to say, well, so if there is this God, isn't he, you know, just kind of like in a trial and error type of period? Why, why are there all of these extinctions? And how does that support creation? Well, this 99% um, uh, figure is a supposition. Um, because they've obviously, the they've obviously not seen true. all these things that have gone extinct. Right. They don't they're see just, them. I mean, they're just, right. they're it's an not idea. in a fossil record. They've got a fossil to a fish to an amphibian. And there's a big difference. And there's just a lot of steps along the way. And we don't have those steps today. They're not alive today. So they must have gone extinct. They must have occurred. They must have lived and died and left no fossils. Isn't evolution wonderful? I mean, it's all based on something they <laughs> the don't story. see. Yes. They just it don't see. Story. It's, it's a, <laughs> they don't see them. That's the point. They just don't see them. They don't have the fossils. Okay. But what, according to the theory, they must have existed, and they don't exist today. So they must have gone extinct. Okay. Now, but they would give the assertion that, well, well isn't God, if, you know, if God exists and we have all these extinctions, then isn't he just kind of doing a trial and error sort of thing. How do you respond to that? You know, that would be the case. If, in fact, I, I tell my Christian friends who tend to believe in theistic evolution, I say, you're proposing a God who was this trial and error, hit and miss that's right. uh, sort of God. And, no, the God that's described in the scriptures is one that he has all knowledge. He's omniscient. And he's all powerful, omnipotent. He knows what he wants and he can do it. He doesn't have to wait around with all these trials and errors. In fact, you think about it, um, in, in theistic evolution, why did God create the trilobites if they were going to be extinct before man ever got here? You know, we, mm -hmm. we've got their fossils, got a lot of fossils of trilobites, but was he looking for something he could call his image? And, well, trilobites didn't work out, so, let's, oh, here's some dinosaurs, they're kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe, that, <clears throat> maybe T Rex, he'll be my image. Uh huh. Nah, better not. Oh, there's an ape. No, not. Oh, there's an ape with no tail. I'm going to call him my image. And, and that one stuck. Now, is that the kind of God we worship? No. God knows what he's doing and he's powerful enough to pull it off without making a lot of blind alleys. Mm -hmm. um, I think theistic evolution, it's neither theistic it's, and it's not evolutionary. It's mm -hmm. uh, Christians who believe in an omnipotent God ought to know better than to believe in evolution, any well, kind of The evolution. fact of the matter is, as creationists, we believe that God created in the six days and that he created uh, animals after their own kind, right? And then there was the flood, and it was through the flood that we have all of these extinctions. Am I right? It's through the flood that that's why we have the extinctions. It's not that God was doing a trial and error uh, sort of process, but it was through the, the flood, we, there was probably a lot of animals died. Well, don't overstate the extinction idea. Okay. Fish to amphibian, there's a lot of in-between steps. Evolution says all these in-between steps are extinct. No, maybe they just never existed. And so they're not extinct. But fish are still here, and amphibians are still here, mm -hmm. and varieties of each. If, if you look at the fossil record and set down all that array of animals that we see in the fossil record, compare them to the array of animals alive today, mm -hmm. and the majority are still around. Mm -hmm. They're still but the, around. But the fact of the matter is trilobites are, are extinct. There are a few there animals are, that have gone extinct. Animals and that, that and are sometimes extinct. evolutionists say extinction proves evolution. No, it doesn't. Evolution is all about the, the gaining of new animal types and the gaining mm -hmm. of new That's features right. and new body parts. It's new stuff. Extinction is all about losing what you got. Right. Extinction is, again, the opposite of evolution. And that's what we see to the extent that we see evolution. That's the opposite of evolution. Thank you. Thank you.